We're good to go. All right. Well, welcome to Ants Marching. We're just going to do kind of a podcast right now just as a fun little recap of last week when I went to Ohio, went to my hometown and did some things, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But check us out. Today I'm at the gym. One of my clients is leaving, Mike Guerrero, and we're just bullshitting. We're just talking at the front door and everything else. And this dude walks in, and uh, he's like, hey, man, you know, is, is there a fee for a drop-in fee or whatever? I'm like, yeah, man, $10, whatever. Just come in and work out, whatever. And, uh, like, he walks, he gives me, he hooks me up, and then he walks away, and I'm like, what the hell, man? I'm like, that's David Arquette. The former WCW champion, the guy from the Scream movies, Dave Arquette's in my gym. I'm like, what the hell? Like, for one, what is Dave Arquette doing in Jonesboro? You know, like, and I'm kind of baffled by that, but he was, you know, probably doing something around or maybe wrestling. He's still wrestling. Dude, this guy, Dave Arquette from the Scream movies, the former WCW champion, um, the heavyweight champion at that, man, he's 47 and jacked. Like, he was ripped up. And I was like, damn. I was like, Dave, man, you're, you're getting it at 47. I mean, he I mean, he looked good. And he was down there. And, it, like, it took me a second to realize that it was Dave Arquette. Because, you know, who the, like, walking in my gym, he must have had something, promotions or something near. Or was, but it was cool, man. He came in and, you know, worked out, you know, pretty hard. It was pretty, you know, and I'm up there and everything else. And uh, my lawyer walks in. I got some good news from her. Good things going. And uh, if anybody knows what I'm talking about with my little boy and, um, you know, so Dave, <laughs> he, hell, I even told him the good news because who's he going to tell? He don't want to, he don't care about me. He don't, he just wanted to work out and he was down there working out and everything else. And, um, you know, he, when he was leaving, he said, Hey man, I'm going to come back, whatever. I was like, Oh, great. You know, and everything else. And it was one of those moments where I was like, dude, I sh- I want to take a picture and f- post it on Facebook that you're at my gym. But I was like, man, that guy just wants to work out. Yeah. He just, he ain't here, you know, he ain't here to be harassed or anything. I was like, nah, man, I ain't even going to ask him for, it's just, that's just, to me, it's kind of silly to promote him, yippee, but now, even though I'm talking about it today, you know, but it, it was cool as hell. Dave Arquette just walks in my gym and I'm like, yes, I'm like, get that work on, Dave. He was busting his ass down there. And he, I mean, like I said, he was 47. He's all jacked up, ripped up, talked to him a little bit. He's seen some of the pictures of the gym and everything else, and he kind of asked me what I did, and I told him and everything else, and then we talked about, I was like, man, are you still wrestling? He goes, yeah, I got a couple matches coming up and everything else. I mean, this guy's been in Mike Guerrero from Kusi, who's one of my sponsors. Uh, They develop um, software, um, and he was there, and then my lawyer was there and everything else, and she got to work out, but no, I I wanted to kind of talk. This week coming up, Scott McDaniel who's a good friend of mine. He, uh, he's a national poet. He was a, uh, he was a, he's a Bush cart prize nominee. And then he's also been in several magazines like, uh, mad swells, deep South, uh, Oberon poetry magazine and the common ground magazine as well. And I've actually been to Scott's readings. He's going to be this week's guest. Uh, I do believe Thursday or Sunday night, um, depending on what we got. Cause young Brandon over there has got, prom on Thursday, so he can't hook me up. He's got to worry about it. Like, and what school does prom on a Thursday? Yeah, that's awful. I was like, this school, little school Marmaduke in uh, Arkansas next to uh, Jonesboro, they're having prom on Thursday. So Brandon can't be here, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do it Thursday or Sunday, but Scott McDaniel's going to be on. He's a good friend. He's kind of a political figure. Um, he's helping out the community of Jonesboro, doing some really cool things, uh, working on some tax things. I don't think we're going to talk about that too much, but he also owns Ramson's construction and he's the guy that holds mitts for me for my fight June 1st. So Scott's going to be in here talking about some poetry and everything else. And I've went to a couple of his readings, man. And I'll tell you the story about Scott. He, he read this poem about his wife and how he met his wife and I was listening to the poem, and a lot of people don't understand poetry. They just, they, they want to dismiss as, oh, that's, you know, whatever. They put a stereotype on it or whatever. And I was listening to this poetry, and I was like, damn, man. I was like, Scott's wife sounds like she's from the North. And I was like, 
you know, he kept just describing the bar that he met her at and how he met her and how she talked and how she was and everything else. I was like, man, Scott's wife has got to be from the North. So I asked him, I said, your wife sounds like she's from the North. She sounds like she's a Yankee. And he goes, yeah, man, she's from Marion, Ohio. Marion is like literally 20 minutes from where I live in Salina, where I grew up in Salina. You know, so his wife is uh, Tara. But anyway, Scott McDaniel's the guest this week, either Thursday or Sunday. I'll make sure to post it all and everything. Um, and also, uh, you know, like I said, he holds mitts for me and he's, he's working with me for my June 1st fight, which my opponent got changed, but I got a new opponent, Anthony Trotter. Anthony Trotter stepped up. He's going to hook us up. We're going to get in the ring and put on a show for everybody. You know, he's about 6'3", 255, so he's got a little bit of reach on this old man. But uh, kind of recapping last week when I went back to Ohio. First of all, any of the people from Salina um, or Rockford or any of the fundraisers I went to, the animal shelter fundraiser, the fire department f fundraiser. I was on several radio shows. Uh, Middle's Open. What's up, guys? Uh, they really enjoyed, we were supposed to do one show with Middles Open, and then when we got to talk, and he's like, dude, can we do two shows? Michael Morris, and he's a hell of a guy, they were funny, it was a good time. Went to Columbus to do that, was on WKKI and Salina, K94. Um, but one of the coolest things I gotta do is I gotta go to talk to my high school. You know, and there's about 2,000 students, and these kids just kept packing in. I'm like, oh, man. Like, I started getting nervous, and I've done public speaking before, and I've done motivational things before, but, man, I, I practiced, and I had this had this list of notes in my head, what I wanted to say, how I wanted to, like, tell them that they could be something, and, you know, they wanted to do something, and, man, my I got about into about five, ten minutes, and my hand was shaking the whole time. And I just kept skipping around. I wasn't staying on a topic. I, could, I wasn't even telling them who I was and what I've done and or what I've accomplished and all that. And uh, I stopped for a second and then looked back at them. I said, guys, you know, I'm really nervous. I'm really terrified of you guys right now. You know, because this is, I just wanted to do good for you. And I, and I explained to them. And, you know, I thought I was bombing, you know. And, and you know, I got a, <laughs> I got a drink of coffee and... I started talking again. I, I brought up this story. I said, you know, and this is true with anything. So, it, you know, this is kind of one of those coaching moments. Where, you know, I always want somebody to take one thing from anybody, any coach, any teacher, anything. If you could take one thing from a person and a conversation or everything else to better yourself, it could be a negative thing. It could be a thing like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. So that, that could be a thing you take away from the conversation. Or it could be a positive thing. And I told him, you know, to kind of break the mood and get everybody loosened up a little bit. I told him a story. I was at Pullman Bay Restaurant there in Salina, Ohio. It's where I always eat breakfast. Well, not always. I also go to the fountain. Sorry, D. I, I do go to you too. But um, she's the owner. She's a great lady. And uh, so I'm sitting there and there's this 90-year-old man. Got to be 90. Old, old man. He's eating breakfast. And I look over and I look in his ear. Man, he's got porcupine bristles coming out of his ear hair, man. And it's just like, it's bushy. It's You know, he's an old man. I am sure he's not manscaping too often, you know. But uh, <laughs> it was it was just funny because I'm looking at it and I was like, man, if they could take one thing, for, if they're going to take anything, if I totally bombed today and it didn't work out, like it wasn't, like I didn't feel like it was working out in the beginning, but if they could take one thing, I'm going to tell them this story about, you know, so I said, guys, if you take one thing, here's your one thing. If you, you don't learn anything else from me, today, here's your one thing. Trim your ear hair, girls and guys. It's nasty. Don't be that old man with that porcupine bush just hanging out there. C clean it up. Clean it up. So, but no, I ended and it was a great experience to be there in Salina, Ohio at Salina Senior High School. Mr. Metz, the principal, let me come in and talk to the kids and man, I went home and I was shaking, man. My mom's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm just, I didn't know if I was a panic attack, anxiety attack. I was shaking. I was kind of crying. I was kind of just, you know, just emotional because I just wanted to do so good for Salina. I just wanted to inspire him and tell him like, man, you're from a tough town. You're from a small town. It's very tough, but you can do it. If you focus on your goal, if you get something, you know, whatever I said, it was just a lot of, I talked for about 45 minutes and you know, and I talked to some friends afterwards later in that day, about an hour or two later, 
Parents were contacting me, sending me messages. Thank you all that sent the message. Thank you all the high school students because I told them as well to like Facebook me or Instagram me, which you can Instagram me at Mike Wessel Box. Follow me on Instagram and you can see a lot of content and stuff that I'm doing. But uh, no, I, I just, I got lost my train of thought there, damn. But um, what the hell was I talking about? You got be- Instagram. You gotta follow me. <laughs> but no, I was I was you know the people the people responded and all the parents were talking and sending me messages saying, man, my kid came home. They were so excited. They're like, man, we met this guy and he's from Salina and he's done all these things. And you know, I told them about my surgeries and I told them about the things. You know, a lot of people that don't know, I had a bone replacement surgery. I had about four surgeries last year. Uh, my last surgery was February. And I told them that, and that's why I'm continuing to go. That's why I continue to push, because I don't like to settle for just what I did yesterday. That, that's what I told them, too. I was like, man, you see those old men at the bar? You see those people that are talking like the Al Bundys? I was the greatest in high school. I did this in high school. But man, you ain't done nothing for 40 years after. Like, that's, that's your one thing? That's what you're hanging your hat on? You're settling on that? I'm like, man... I don't settle on that, man. I, I, I always look forward to what the next thing is. Like, that's great. I did those things. It is great. I've done a lot of cool things, got a lot of experiences, but it's not, I'm worried about what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm worried about what I'm going to accomplish tomorrow and what I'm going to be and how good of a person I'm going to be. Am I going to be a good, better person than I was? Because that's my strive. I really want to inspire people to not care about yesterday, you know, not care about what people say. Listen to your haters. Listen to, always listen to the criticism. You know, you don't have to agree with it, but you listen to the criticism. But that doesn't mean you take it to heart because sometimes those haters are right. Sometimes those haters, man, they might be telling you something that you ain't self-evaluating, that you ain't, you don't criticize yourself, you know? So, you know, I ended the speech, the parents, the community was great this week. You know, a lot of friends were calling me. It's like, man, I was at the dinner table at Casa Rodriguez, Salina, Ohio. Um, I was at, you know, <laughs> at the beer barrel and, and St. Mary's, Ohio. And all these people are like, man, we listened to these people. They were talking about your fight. They're excited. And, and people were telling me how proud they were that, that I'm going to be coming to Salina to bring a fight there and that I'm going to be fighting. And it was just a really cool thing for me to have that experience with Salina. And I'm very appreciative that they brought me in to talk. And it, it was just an exciting thing. And you know, now it's the next thing. And then, so I, I went to the radio station the next day, Middles Open. That was great. You can see it on my Facebook um, and Instagram. You can check it out there. And, uh, you know, then I went to WKKI on Friday. And then Saturday, I got to talk to some of the Rockford, the Parkway High School. It's Rockford's the town, but Parkway High School's athletes. And they, you know, they're kind of in a slump, man. They kind of don't really do well in sports because they're, just, they're a small community. I think they got 1,200 people in this town. But, man, you should have seen in this town. There's 1,200 people. All those people were at the fire department fundraiser, and they did a really good job at that. And, you know, I was just blessed that I could talk to the kids at Parkway, and I told them kind of how to deal with some things about adversity that most people, most people just give up. Most people are like, oh, I'm never going to be that. There's no point in me doing this. And, uh, you know, like they don't understand that just showing up is not good enough. Now, a lot of people said that to me in my life, you know, Mike, you, if you want to be something, man, there's not like 99, there's only 1% that make it in professional athletics. There's only 1%. So if you want to be a volleyball player, there's only 1% of people. There's a lot of people that want to do these things. A lot of people want to play baseball, football, whatever sport, MMA, fighting. I mean, I was blessed to get in the UFC. You know, I don't know if I deserve to be there, but I got there. You know, I got to be on the TV show, but that, I'm 1% of the people that got there, you know, of the world. And it's like, you have to get up earlier. You have to get up and do things more with your life than what you're doing. And then the other 99%, you got to push yourself more than what the other night. So the other 99% are not doing this. You've got to do those things. And, um, you know, I just, I just think that, you know, they, they're in Rockford, you know, if they would get up a little bit earlier, if they, you know, just because coach calls practice, doesn't have practice, doesn't mean you don't go to practice. Doesn't mean you call your boys up and say, Hey man, let's get some footwork drills in. Let's get some things in. Let's do some stuff. 
you know, to make ourselves better so that we can, you know, let me try to see if I can fix this a little bit. I'm going to screw this up and it's going to mess up. Yep. I shouldn't have done it. Yep. Well, we'll go back to the way it was. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, look at that. Sorry, I'm, I'm not good at this stuff, but we're going to see if we can get some little... Ah, mother. I almost cussed on the podcast. What are you laughing at, man? You know I ain't good at this stuff. Here, there we go. There we go. We got it. I think we got. It. I won't mess with it again. But uh, <laughs> but um, I don't even know. But no, it was it was good to talk to them, and they asked a couple questions afterwards, and it, and it was really good to hear the question. This one boy asked, he, and I told him about our football team. Like I started uh, the football program in 1998 with the Saint or 1999 with the Saint Francis. Uh, Cougars, uh, the University of St. Francis Cougars in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's where I went to school and played football. And I told him, I was like, look, we won two games our first year. We won two games. And then we ended up being 10-time conference champions in a row. And then they're they're still now, they were just back-to-back national champions at the University of St. Francis. So, and Kevin Donnelly is the winningest football coach. My coach is the winningest football coach of all time. He's got a new book out. Um... I think it's called Snap the Whistle. Check out Kevin Donnelly's book. I mean, that guy has been a big part of my life. And I told the kids at the high school, you know, about that. But this kid asked, like, what did you guys do? How did, what did you guys do to change from two and eight to conference champions? We were, I think we were undefeated or maybe had one loss those, those seasons. I really don't remember. But, um, you know, and I told him, I said, you know what? We showed up when the coaches didn't tell us to show up. We were doing our cardio, conditioning, weightlifting on the times that, that we didn't have, we had breaks on the times we got up early and did double time. We knew we had practice later, but we we showed up more. We did more and it paid off. It paid off. All that hard work paid off the next seasons because we dominated. We were, I mean, our team, my defense was thugs, man. Well, I loved it. We were a bunch of, you know, broken home kids that, you know, just barely got a scholarship and barely got a play, but Man, we were we were some hard nosed dudes, and it was just a lot of fun. But you know, those people that want to be something in their life, they have to make that choice to do more. You have to do more than what is expected of you. If you do just the bare minimum, that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the bare minimum. You're gonna get that bare minimum job. You're gonna get those things that you know, you you're gonna be that hater going, man. I really wish. I really wish, you know, and um, I really wish I did this or I, I want to be that, but it's not for me because it's too hard. Man, everything's too hard. There's a lot of things that are too hard, you know, but you still got to do them if you want to accomplish your goals. You still got to do them if you want to be somewhere. This thing keeps sliding, man. There it goes. Okay. Ooh, uh, almost knocked it off again. But, um, oh God, I'm not good at this crap. But, uh, no, that was a cool thing. You know, I, uh, where, where's my stuff? High school speech, Rockford. Did you, yeah. Oh, then man. So the whole trip was great. And then at the end of the trip, I was flying out of Dayton, Ohio. And I wanted this, this thing is not as pushing forward. Throw me that. Use some tape. Yeah. Throw that roll of tape over there. Yeah. No, no, no. Just throw that roll of tape. I'll just oh, stick it in. Yeah. It's the weight. There we go. Let me see if I can bounce. Sorry for technical problems. There we go. I think we're better now. Yeah. Beard gods. Check them out on Instagram. But, um, no, uh, where was the thing I'm saying? But no, on Sunday, I showed up the airport. I always show up the airport early. I always get there just so that I can get things taken care of. And I just sit and chill, whatever, you know. And uh, I got delays and delays. Dayton and Atlanta was getting huge storms. And it was delayed, delayed. I think I ended up flying out Sunday at like 10 or 11. I really don't remember. 10 or 11. And I flew into Atlanta and got there about 1231. And they're like, man, we, you know, they're not going to have a flight till tomorrow at 1 p.m. So I went and got a hotel just got get me some sleep at least, and um, I got a message from the Delta airline on my on my phone saying the only flight that they can get me today was leaving at eight o'clock. 
And I'm like, oh, God. So I run out of the hotel room, tell the front desk, get me a taxi, get me to the airport, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I'm barely going to get there. Well, Jessica's joining us. Good evening. Jessica's the mother of my IT guy. Which is, what does IT mean? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I just made it. Technology? Information. I don't know what that means. I, I keep saying IT guy. So I please, please forgive me that I, I'm, I'm a giant monkey, people. That's all I'm at. Sometimes I know some stuff. Sometimes I don't. But um, anyway, I'm going to just keep continuing my IT guy. And uh, <laughs> what was I? Damn it. I lost my train of thought again. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. But my flight. So I get a hotel. I'm rushing to get like, a taxi to get to the airport just to make this flight because it's the only one I'm going to be able to get on that day. I get to the airport. I get my ticket. And they're like, oh, you're going to have to get through security quick. Because, you know, you might not make it. So I'm standing there and there's probably 300 people in the security line. I mean, it's it's packed. Everybody got delayed. Everybody's trying to get through security. And I stand there for about 5, 10 minutes and I'm not moving very fast. And I just, I was like, hey, everybody. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to miss my flight. I'm getting on my flight. You know, I'm supposed to be there at 8, 10. It's 7.55. Guys, can I please cut the line? The whole private, se the whole section let me cut the line and go in front of them so that I can make a phone. I'm running. Now, I'm not a good runner because uh, <laughs> my knee and everything else. So I'm not, that jogging and sprinting stuff is over for me. I can run hills because it puts at the right, my knee at the right angle. But I, you ain't going to see me running no dang marathons anymore. Not that I ever did. But <laughs> um, so I get past them. I get on the, I finally get on the plane and uh, my my boy, uh, Matt Schindeldecker at CrossFit Crave in Salina, Ohio there, he hooked me up with uh, flights. So he put me on first class too. Thank you, Matt. You know, but um, he hooked me up with some flights, uh, the first class. So I'm sitting there in the plane. I'm like, oh, I made it. I get to go home today. Yay, you know. And I, I was like, oh, where's my watch? Where's my watch? Oh, no. Where's my gear? I left all of it at the hotel. And all my box, my brand new boxing shoes, my brand new boxing gloves, everything that I train with is on there. I'm like, oh no. So I'm on the phone calling people to call them to try to find my bag. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it was a nice hotel. And uh, so I'm hoping that I'd get it back. And, you know, I, I just wasn't thinking because I couldn't remember what I put in this bag. But usually I take my boxing gear with my carry on. So I didn't know if that was that bag or what I lost. And, uh, you know, so I land in uh, Memphis and I go down to the baggage claim to get my other two bags that were on the flights last the night before. And I walk up and I've got a turquoise bag um, that I borrowed from Jessica, uh, Brandon's mom. And she's part, she's the one that helped me out with this podcast and then kind of designed the studio and everything else and uh, got everything going for us. And, I see this bag, it's ripped open. This big turquoise bag, I see it and it's ripped open, it's standing up, I'm like, come on, man. And I, and I can't find my other bag. And I'm like, oh, so they lost my bag, all my workout gear, all my workout clothes, everything. I only have one pair of shorts. No, I've got a couple. I'm, yeah, I've got a couple high elite shorts, so I'm good there. They show a little too much of the package though <laughs> they do they they i shouldn't I, well i mean the highly shorts don't get the gray ones the gray ones are revealing but um no so i get I, they they're gonna locate my bag i don't know if they're gonna be able to find it she goes we've lost a lot of bags coming out of land it's not looking good you know there's a lot of bad things my other bag is ripped completely in half you know, say so they replaced that bag with another brand new suitcase, which is very nice. You know, it's a very, it's, I think it's a really good suitcase, actually. And, uh, you know, so I get home and I'm just, uh, I'm just exhausted from the thing. And I had to make food prep and all that things for my, uh, for my clients and everything else. And so it was the last part of it was horrible. It was just horrible. And I lost my watch. I lost all my boxing gear. So, but I'm alive. And I made it here, so we'll be on a positive lag. But thank you, Matt Schindler Decker, for hooking me up, get me able to fly in to uh, to be, do some promotions and everything else for my fight June first in Salina, Ohio, the hometown showdown. It's going to be at uh, 
uh, actually, uh, they changed my opponent, and uh, the athletic commission, I guess, accepted my first opponent and then said no. So, Anthony Trotter, I will be fighting Anthony Trotter June 1st and uh, in Salina, Ohio, and gee, I can't think of anything else right there on that. But I also wanted to say, besides that, thank you to Tom Birch at Rockford Carryout. He took me over to the high school and had me talk to the, the Rockford, the Parkway High School, but it's Rockford Town in Ohio there. And he took me over and hooked me up with that gig. And he also hooked me up with some good food, man. I love Ohio pizza. And so like around there, that pizza is, ugh, I, I, mean, I, I got to stay away from Salina because I eat pizza every day there. But um, also a little bit of shout out. I got a new sponsor, Salina Glass. Um, in Salina, Ohio, they do some major buildings and they've done some like the arenas and everything else. And they're a bit, they've been good friends my whole life. So shout out to Salina Glass and Bighorn Holler, Shane Plunkett. Um, if you've never checked out what they do uh, with the Bighorn Haulers, man, they, they have some polar bears and mountain lions. they got some crazy taxidermy stuff that they do, and they also deliver them. So shout out to uh, Bighorn Haulers. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was a good week. I got to do a lot of cool things. I got to see a lot of people. And the best thing was is people just kept, kids kept contacting me on Instagram. Mike Wessel, at Mike Wessel Box. Check that out. But... The kid, I told the salon high school and the Rockford kids, like, hey, if you got a question and you don't want to ask it right now, just ask me on ask me on Instagram. If you put C Town or Parkway, I'll answer it right away. As soon as I can get to it, I answer it. You know, so a lot of times I was on the uh, bike, just kind of pedaling when I was starting my workout or whatever, answering people's you know text mess or messages on Instagram and everything else. It was very cool. To hear the feedback I got back from talking to the high schools and the things that I did that week. And then also when I was leaving, you know, I still had friends contacting me saying, you know, that you were on the rest. You know, I heard in the restaurant they were talking about your fight and everything else. So uh, it's always good to go home, but it's always even better when people are positive because you came home. You know, that people are really happy. They're excited about this fight and to have me fighting there. And it just makes me feel good to do this for my hometown. So you know, I really, I really enjoyed that. But this week's guest, once again, um, it's either going to be Thursday or Sunday. Jess, can you do Thursday if Brandon shows you how to work the computer? Because, yeah, it's going to probably be late, but we, we might mean it might be this late too. But, you know, if anything, we'll hit it Sunday. Uh, probably we usually can make it around 830 to make the podcast work on Sunday. But Scott McDaniel, like I said, he's a Pushcart Prize nominee for his poetry. He's a national poet. And he's been several magazines. Um, none of them, probably anybody that's watching this has ever heard of because they're they're kind of <laughs> intelligent. <laughs> they're intelligent magazines. Not to say that you're not intelligent. I'm just saying that, you know, you probably read something different. But Scott's going to be on. He's the owner of Ramson's Construction as well. Or he's he runs Ramson's Construction. His family started that business. They're the ones that built the Arkansas State Stadium. They're the ones that built the waterfall. They're the ones... Have you ever been to Arkansas State Stadium here in Jonesboro? Man, it's been added on. The additions have been awesome. And he's done all that. You know, they built this stadium. I think the guy that built the new New York Yankees stadium came in and designed this stadium for him. So Scott built all that as well. We're going to talk a little about that. I don't know if we're going to talk about the tax thing that's coming up here in Jonesboro because there's a vote and it's going to bring a really cool park. It's going to bring a really cool thing and scott's trying to make changes along with a couple of others you know he's, he's a little bit political when i don't know exactly what he does he's not student council what would that be that's that, that, Parson, right? no city council ah, that's what it is big monkey people big monkey um but no he's on the city council and he does a lot what he's what he's trying to do is he's a cultured guy man he went to uh poland with me when i fought in poland He's, he also holds mitts for me when I do boxing and everything else. And he's one of the fun guys that I love to talk to because he's just so, he, he's like a genius and he's a workaholic and he just goes, goes, goes. But he's trying to bring some things to Jonesboro that can improve this town and in, in the city to make it better, to, to bring things that a little bit more culture, a little bit more fun things for kids to do, you know, like parks and water parks and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm all for full support of him 
doing what he does because he's awesome. And uh, he's just awesome to talk to. Like I said, he's a poet. He's going to have a couple readings here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, but he also is flying to New York to do a reading, which is awesome for him. Because, you know, like I said earlier in the story, I found out his wife was from 20 minutes where I grew up of just by the poet poem he read. He read a poem and it reminded me, like, that's got to be a woman from Ohio, you know, like, that's got to be a Yankee girl, you know, just the way she talked and everything else and how he described it. His poetry is really good. And he wrote a poem about me walking out. Uh, when he walked out, I think it might have been Poland when he walked out in one of the fights. It might have been Bellator as well. But he wrote a poem about what the sensations and the emotions that was going through, going about. Yeah, it was a Bellator fight. I think it was Josh Diekman, which was a cool story because I've, I lost to Josh Diekman. And uh, I got knocked out, you know, and I, I got flash knocked out or whatever. But right after the fight, Josh was waiting out there for me. Shout out to Josh Diekman. I hope you're watching, brother. Love you. But uh, right after the fight, Josh and his buddy Tuna, <laughs> shout out to Tuna too, but Josh and his buddy Tuna were waiting outside the arena. And they they were like, dude, we're going to have a beer. Let's go have a beer. You're going to like, you're like, because they couldn't, like after I got knocked out, I just got up and shook their hands. I'm like, hey man, that's the way it goes. You know, I, I can handle losses. I don't care if I lose. I mean, I don't want to lose. But it doesn't bother me. I've lost a lot in life. I've lost a lot million times. I never fail. I always show up. I always get there. But hey, losing's part of it. And that's the way it is. And Josh, uh, we left the casino and went to his house, you know, just to party a little bit. And and Scott pulled me aside. My guest this week is Scott McDaniel. And he pulled me to the side. He goes, dude, he goes, this is crazy. He goes, this is one of the coolest things. He goes, this is why I love you. And this is why it's so cool to be your friend and be part of this because the guy that just knocked you out is buying beers the rest of the night and is taking you to his house and you guys are going to hang out and party in Connecticut with each other. He goes, that that's just, that's a crazy thing. And, you know, and it really was, but I, I don't have any animosity to the people I fight. I don't, you know, it's just a job. It's just, you know, you know, if I win, hey man, great. If I lose, okay, great, you know. Um, another guest that's going to be on soon is Justin Frazier, heavyweight. I think he's got a big title fight coming up. He just he was on the, uh, the latest season of The Ultimate Fighter. He made it to the finale and he lost. But, hey, man, that's what happened. You know, Justin's a great guy and we fought before. And, you know, before we fought, we had there was a little bit of animosity and there's a little bit of everybody else, I think, was talking more than what we were talking I think, you know, and causing some drama and everything else. But after that fight, man, I walked over to his corner and I told his dad, I was like, look, we don't need to be fighting. We don't need to be hating on each other. We need to be training together. We need to be getting better, to, you know. So I think Justin's going to be on as well soon. But like I said, Scott McDaniel's going to be on this week. He's been with me all over the place. He helped me plan my trip when I took my mom and my sister to Ireland. And we had a great time there. And he told me the places to go, what to do. So, you know... Scott's been around the world and he's done some things. And like I said, he's trying to help Jonesboro get a little bit more culture, bring a little bit more culture to this town. And just not only just through city council, but through his poetry. And I think he's going to read a couple poems that he's got and, you know, just maybe give some experiences. And you, you, may, you it's interesting, man. I really didn't know if I'd like a poetry reading, but I've went to a couple of his and it's, it's fascinating because... If you can sit there and relax your mind enough just to take in what they're saying and how they're work, using rhetoric and how they're doing these things, you know, it, it really is an art form. And a lot of people don't understand it. So I, I'm hoping he can explain it to some people so that, you know, maybe, you know, we get a little bit more educated and we ain't such big monkeys. But um, no, that's kind of what happened last week. You know, I'm still hoping to get my bags back. I'm still hoping to get my watch back because I hate not having my my Apple Watch because God, I don't know how many, I don't know how many calories I did today. Now, yeah, now everybody's beating me. Now everybody's bragging they're beating me because oh, I beat you today. But I don't have my watch. You at least you have the screenshots. Yeah, look, the three AM screenshots. That's what I still have. You have those. Yeah, I've got the three AM screenshots. You're gonna know when I get up, and that's you know that's part of the things I said to the kids too, was you know. I get up early in the morning to start my day and I work till, I mean, it's, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock now. And that's what you got to do if you want to be successful. I want this podcast to be successful. You know, it's called Ants Marching. Check it out on YouTube. Like it and subscribe to it. Help a brother out. 
Um, and, uh, I mean, we really worked hard on the studio, the audio, the cameras, and the background decorations. That one picture that's got the guy, the Vietnamese soldier, getting killed. He's in the, that's in the Smithsonian, as well as the burning monk below it, which you can't see. It just looks like a giant fireball right here. But, uh, you know, the, there are a lot that went into this. You know, Brandon's helped a ton. Jessica's helped a ton. You know, I want to thank my mom and my grandma. You know, she's passed away, but they've always been backers. And Aunt Joy, I ain't forgetting you. You know, but, uh, you know, they've made this podcast possible. And uh, I, I want to kind of end on this tonight. The reason I call this podcast Ants Marching, um, Corey, I can't bring him on camera, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but uh the reason I'm, i called this podcast ants marching what were we going to call it mike wessel alignment alignment, alignment. and we we kind of like that name where we kicked around some other names but i always when i said i want to call i told jessica i said i want to call the, the podcast ants marching and she goes are you mad right now and i go no i'm, I'm not mad <laughs> no you know I was like, why? I was like, I just think it's, she goes, because that's usually what you say when you're mad at the society or whatever. And then the reason I say, you know, a bunch of ants marching is because people always follow this path. They always follow what they're supposed to do for comfort. They always follow this path. Well, I better do this because, you know, if I don't, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to make this much money. I've got I to be this and I've got to do this because i got to stay in this bubble in this box and follow this line what everybody else is doing. And I don't agree with that at all. You know, my life has never been follow other people. You know, I'm not saying that I'm a leader. I'm not saying that I'm one of those people that you need to be following me. I'm just going to do it my way. I love that I can depend on myself for my job. I love that I can make my own hours and live my own life and not have the worries. Now, I've got problems. I still got worries. I got still everything else. That comes with working for somebody or working for yourself. You know, but I'm going to do it for myself because I watched a factory go under in my hometown and uh, lose, lost it to Mexico. And that town was devastated. Salina was devastated when the Huffy Bicycles went out of town and a lot of people were worried and that town's came back bigger than bigger than it ever has and it's, it's a great place but you know that's one of those things where make your own path you know don't be an ant, ant marching don't follow that line if you got a dream if you got a hope if you got a want outwork it get up with me at four o'clock or three thirty in the morning and do something make something happen you know you it ain't gonna just land in your lap you only hear about the one guy, and you really don't. I've never met a lottery winner. I've never met the big millionaire, billionaire lottery winners. I don't know if they really even exist. I think they just get a fake guy up there and say he won, and you know they take all of our money. That's conspiracy. We can get into that later. But no, the but the reason the podcast is called Ants Marching is because that's what I say about the people that just follow the line. They're not original. They don't want to do anything original. They stay in the same place, and usually those are the people that are the biggest haters. Those are the people that are the ones that say, no, but somebody can't do something or laugh when somebody, you know, loses or doesn't succeed at what they were trying to do. They're the ones, but they ain't doing nothing with their life. They're those armchair quarterbacks or they're those, the people that are sitting at home going back in high school. I was awesome. Back in high school. I did this. We ain't done nothing in 20, 30 years, homie, that you ain't that cool either. You just criticizing other people trying to be successful. And, um, that's what I don't want to do. I don't, I don't, I don't want to ever criticize somebody being successful. I want to uplift you and help you out. You know, I don't, I don't want to see people not succeed and not live out their dreams. So, you know, follow me on Instagram and of course, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram is Mike Wessel box. Um, follow me on there. Follow me on YouTube and like, and subscribe to ants marching Mike Wessel ants marching. And, uh, like I said, this week we're going to have Scott McDaniel. He's an awesome poet. I'm, I'm excited about that conversation because he'll come in the gym and we'll just start talking and it's just about random subjects and it's just so much fun to talk to him and you'll, you'll hear how intelligent this dude, he's, he's literally a genius on almost everything. He makes me a better person every time I talk to him. So this week, Scott McDaniel is going to be on either Thursday or Sunday, more than likely Sunday. It seems like you too, because Marmaduke's got to have prom on Thursday. What? Don't make sense. Anyway. 
But uh, like I said, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Rockford Carryout, Tom Birch over there. Thank you. CrossFit Crave, Matt Schindeldecker. Thank you. Kusi, Mike Guerrero. Thank you. Big Horn Holler, Shane Plunkett. Thank you. And also, the newest sponsor for my fight this June 1st is Salina Glass. Brad and Barry and all the Rolfus family, thank you very much. Um, his actual name is Butter. Butter Rolfus. Now, there you go. So, But that's what we've called him since second grade. But thank you to all my sponsors that are helping support me. Um, hopefully, your money just didn't get wasted and I get my bags back to have my boxing gear and my watch and everything else. But uh, I'll be up at 3.30 tomorrow morning. I'm doing something with my life. I hope you will be too. Bye.